This is a Podco original. But everyone was told like, oh, classes, you'll get in. Like, that's not, that's nothing. And then I didn't get into the classes. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? I will say I do get stopped like every once in a while. Future Harper, like, you know, you never know what someone's going to come up to you about. And, like, that's kind of a deep cut. But then, of course, there's sometimes, a.k.a. the Debbie Downer at Disney World. I was about to say, all... I was like, that's a legendary <laughs> yeah, break. That's like the giant break. And we all just started laughing. What was your first job? Not on the stage stage, but, oh, okay. but being filmed. What was that? I mean, it was, aside from some commercials in Chicago, it was probably SNL. are on a podcast. We are, that's Hi, crazy. Jen Stone, Hi, David Deloise. It's so How nice are you? to see you. You know what's so funny? I was so tired and sleeping about mm-hmm. two seconds ago, but now we're on a podcast, so I'm going to talk really fast and say hi. Very special episode today. Uh, such, I'm so excited. We're, we're like bringing more of like the Harperverse into, into things. We had Kate on, who played my mom, and now we have the amazing Rachel Dratch, who played <sighs> future Harper. Yes! All the way in New York, coming in hot. Uh, hey, Rachel, thank you so much for coming Hi. on. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, uh, it's so, we're, you know, you're, I don't know if you know this, but you're like a comic genius. Uh, just a little bit. Thank you. I don't know what to say, but thank you. <laughs> I get uh, really <laughs> uncomfortable with compliments too, but I, I hope you know. There's we'll, a lot of comic geniuses out there. Yeah, well, go ahead. I, I, we'll get into it as well. Like we'll shower you with compliments because there's a lot to compliment you on. But I I was geeking out so hard the week that you were on Wizards. Like I I literally just was in awe the entire time. And And then when you were asking me like how I was doing things so that you could like I, I just, my brain like oozed out of my ears. Like I just couldn't handle it, especially at like 15, 16, however I old, old I was at the time. And, Wait, and I just had a memory. I just had a memory. Everybody oh, stand by, stand cool. by. Okay. We have a memory. Oh, you, no, you came up to me. I think it might've been when I was all done. And you yeah. said, you like fanned out at me. It was so cute. I, I think, I, I think was, it was at the end. You were like, I just wanted to say like, <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm making this up, but part of it up. But no, 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 that you sounds right. Said, like, you might've said like, I waited until the end to say this, but. I'm a big fan of it. It was really sweet. And I just remember that now. So anyway. That, yeah. sound, that sounds about part because I tried to play it cool. And I tried to be like, we're fellow thespians and like whatever. And <laughs> I like tried to keep it together. And then what's, like finally lost it. What's your take you. on that? Who who have you seen oh. that you're like, oh my God, I want to say hello. I have, oh I don't God. know <laughs> what I want to say. I like this cadence. What, what, yeah. it, 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 do, well, you, I, do you say something? And who have you possibly geeked out on? Okay, you know who I geek... Okay, so first of all, there's like the comedy legends that I geek out on, you know, when I was back when I was doing the show, like Steve Martin or something. Oh my God. But sometimes, sometimes it's someone that I'm, I so am so geek out that I don't say anything because I just like... But then a few times I've geeked out about uh, rock stars like I that I randomly have run into. Like, um, so the three... Well, I feel like you're kind of my age, so you, David, so you might get this. But the three that I really flipped out about were... Um, uh, Elvis Costello and and um, Rick Ocasek and and Debbie Harry. Like oh, I saw no. them three three separate times, and I fully you know got, became speechless. But I did blurt out, oh, "I'm so excited to meet you." <laughs> so yeah, those three were like the ro- the Mount Rushmore of '80s rock. Uh, right. It's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because the rock stars are you know like I'm I'm a big fan of Pink Floyd and Roger Waters. I went to a concert and I was in the front and he touched my hand. I was like, I'm never going to wash this hand again. You know, <laughs> but, you, but you did, right? Yeah, and and uh, <laughs> I did Third Rock from the Sun and Elvis Costello did the last episode and this was before like cell phones and stuff where you actually took a picture yeah. with a camera. And we were told not to take any photos with him, not to bother him, all that stuff. Well, he came up to us because I did like a reoccurring in the, in the classroom with John Lithgow and he wanted to take a picture with us. <gasps> Ooh, Isn't that crazy? That's sweet. Yeah. And, and, and the nice. thing is, uh, a friend of mine saw someone famous recently and didn't say anything. And I was like, I don't. What? What? But you can, you can. I like it when people yeah, come up people to me like, so oh my nice. God, you... I mean, they typically say you were my childhood. And then I'm like, now yeah. I feel old, but they say <laughs> you made me feel so good. And thank you for that. And I'm, you know, I'm, I say, where's your phone? Let's take a picture and then yeah. let's move on. But it does feel good. It makes me feel good. if but, somebody but, says here's that. A, but you are a kind person. And that's the thing that's for me is like a lot of times I don't want the illusion ruined. 
Because I've gone up to some people and like they've been dicks and then I can't enjoy their stuff anymore. Yeah. Like they've just been like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like really dismissive. And so I'm just like, yeah. So sometimes like I'll, if it's somebody that's like a character actor or somebody that I know has like been pounding the pavement for a long time and there was like one performance, Margot Martindale was one, which I know is like a deep cut, but she did this like Paris Jetamine short where she was playing this woman who had always dreamed of going to Paris and it gets me every time. I think I've even talked about it with yeah, you before, Yeah. but I went up to her in a restaurant. And I was like, I don't think you understand. Like something about that just really struck a chord because I know as like as an actor who didn't just shoot to the top or whatever, it's an, it's so nice to hear those, like those performances touch people, you know? Yeah. Um, I want to kind of like shift gears. Wait, can I say one thing? Yeah, of course. I went up to Coppola one time, like Francis Ford Coppola, like, I mean, the God in, yeah. in my house yeah, and in yeah. my life. Well, Nicholas and I was Cage. like, I'm going to say something. And I went up to him just to be like, just to say this, thank you for your service. No, thank you for your work. I love you. And he just was like, uh, somebody's bothering me. And I, I just was like, oh, I'm sorry, but I still can enjoy his work. Okay, okay. go ahead. Well, I'm glad that you can make that separation. I like we got a little gossip out of it. I know, there's always I'm a little- for something negative. I want something negative. A little I'm goss, cheap. a little goss. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to take it back to the beginning because I, okay. I switched from, I was about to go to like um, UCLA for psychology. I did the whole like community <gasps> college route. And I, I know. So I saw that you graduated from Dartmouth with a degree in drama and psychology. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So my question for you is how do you find psychology and what you learned there and performing go hand in hand? Oh, we're starting off with such a deep. I know. I'm sorry. I'm an old fart. That's a good question. I mean, I'm still so interested in psychology that it's still like, yeah, you know, I, I want like another life where I could go be a yeah, psychologist. Yes, but um, I guess it's just you know the very basic answer that probably anyone could figure out. I'm not saying anything really inventive here, but um, just you know, it's just all around human behavior and like you know, a lot of comedy, of course, is like you're acting one way, but inside the person is actually thinking something else, and that's yeah. what kind of makes it funny. So you know, that's like all of psychology. It's like what, whatever, what fronts are you putting up, or what. What's your history? Like, I, I like just figuring people out and all that. So that's totally. kind of the same sort of when field, I, think, I guess. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, I think acting, there's a lot of studying. Um, I, I saw something with Uta Hagen recently, and she's like, we're working all the time. If you burn yourself, how long did it take to react yeah. to the burn? What is this? How are we feeling about that? I think psychology is very important in acting because we have to get in touch with what we're feeling, what we're knowing, how it affects other people to read what's going on. Cause a lot of times people will say, yeah, I'd love to. And you're like, wait a minute, you looked up and write and right, I'm guessing yeah. that maybe you're yeah. not. And so yes. those little subtleties that we can bring as a, as an actor, or, or important, right. you know? Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, like, the psychology of drama is easier because it's, like, we know what makes us cry, right? But the psychology of comedy to me is such, like, a enigma because it's, like, what we don't necessarily know. Like, something that makes us laugh one moment might not make us laugh again. I love you, Jen Stone. I don't know if, if drama is easier. I think a lot of – I mean, it's very hard to do both. But sometimes people are holding back. And they can't access that That's drama true. inside of their bodies. That's you where you just got to let it rip, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's awesome that you did that. I think that everybody, I mean, regardless of being an actor or not, you know, knowing uh, uh, the human experience, I think, is is good for it's communication. It's too. part of being alive. And uh, you were part of Chicago's famous Second City, um, which Kate was in kind of the Chicago comedy scene as well. Kate Flannery played my mom. Yeah. Um, what are some of your favorite memories from Second City? Oh, my gosh. And I and how did it start? Memory. How did you get in yeah, there? Did you, yeah, yeah. you have to audition like Saturday Night Live to get into it? Yeah, so, okay, so I had done improv in college and I, I just wanted to try, con- I, I knew like I wanted to at least know I had tried to do the comedy thing before I went off and became a therapist in the yeah. suburbs of Boston. <laughs> so I wanted to, but I wasn't this kid who was like, I'm going to make it. You know, I wasn't like, sorry, my, my son just walked <laughs> Okay, sorry, I have to wait till he's No, you're fine, here. don't worry about uh, it. Okay, so, um... <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't one of these kids who was like, you know, Hollywood or bust. So it was just like, <laughs> I wanted to go out and try it. So I so I went to Second City because our improv group had gone out there for a little field trip during the summer to like check out Chicago. And then I got there, and you auditioned for classes at Second City. And it was myself and this woman that was in my improv group. And we auditioned for classes. 
and she got in and I did and I was oh. told like but everyone was told like oh classes you'll get in like that's no that's nothing and then I didn't get into the classes I was like oh, oh my god what have I done but then eventually like I got into the class and then everything took like you know you guys know how it is with the acting world yeah, it always and- takes like 10 strikes and then you get it mm-hmm. whatever but um but then I then I was in the classes and then you work your way up to the little training center and then you audition for touring company and then eventually I got the touring company and then eventually get on the main stage. So that's how that happened. But isn't it but- nice to have some rejection to make you work harder? What if you went right to the main stage? You don't appreciate it yeah. as much well, maybe. And also like, I mean, you need the state, you need the experience, you need the stage time. Like even people that get on SNL really early when they're really young and they haven't had the writing experience, like, that's a whole learning curve. I mean, it's a learning curve anyway, but it's, yeah. you know, you need all that time. But yeah, I, but something in you has to know, like, okay, keep going. Like, that's the weird part of it. It's like, when do you listen to the keep going voice? And when do you listen to the outside, all the no's that are coming your way? And that's like that balance that yeah. I still don't, still don't understand. <laughs> and I've been in this business. Bro, I, I, still, I, still don't time, get baby. I still don't get how you keep up. You're like, I got this. And then, you know, when you're getting you know, nothing, whatever. But, um, but yeah, so, but second city, it was, it was so fun because all these people back then it was like the place to go for comedy. I mean, it still is, but like now there's a scene in New York a little bit more. And of course there's the groundlings in LA, but, um, but it was all these people from all over that just had moved there to try this. So it was, it was, so, I mean, I was there with so many fun people as, I mean, there's like the famous ones and the ones that aren't the famous, but everyone was, um, just in this thing together and we were then you would do your improv stuff together your shows and then you would all hang out together too so it was like this giant you know 20 something group of crazy people (laughs) hanging out it's so fun were were your mom and dad were were, was there comedy at the the house uh uh, when you were growing up yeah so my dad was very very funny he was um not in the biz (laughs) he was he was a radiologist, actually, but he had done community theater. He had done plays in college and stuff like that. And he was just a very funny person. Like, so I think we kind of grew up with this sort of almost like training in the house, you know. Um, and, you know, my parents both were into, you know, whatever, SNL and like Carol Burnett. Like, I just remember seeing Laugh-In when I was really little. So it, it was in the house floating around, you know. With yeah. Ruth Buzzy, who was a family yes. friend, and 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 uh, uh, Lily it's, Tomlin. Yes. Oh my God, Lily I mean, Tomlin, genius. You know, I mean, that yeah. kind of uh, yeah. uh, uh, was a little bit of like Saturday Night Live before Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I mean, sketch yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is very interesting. I had a similar thing growing up with with both my parents were of you know course, very yeah. much in the business, and you know at the dinner tables, who can make me cry, who can make me laugh, and do, you know it just was we were kind of on, and I didn't know the difference. You know, it yeah. just was what was happening. You know, yeah. And so, did you guys? Because I, I was doing a little research on you. Because I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I love a little school. That's I good. love a little homework. I don't do any research. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably no, I, I'm, it's no, good. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I. I Read that you and Tina Fey had um, it Drach and Fey. Did that? Ha- I'm, yes. I'm guessing that came from Second City. Yeah. So Tina and I were in the same cast for two shows, um, two reviews, and then um, she got hired to be a writer for SNL. And then I, had, by this time, I had left Second City, and uh, I had auditioned for SNL, and I didn't get it the first time. Then I left Second City, and. Um, wasn't really doing it. I tried LA and nothing was really happening. Yeah. And then Tina was writing and I think she was kind of missing performing. So we decided to do this two person show that we did in Chicago one summer. And, uh, it was just two person sketch show, but the way that shows develop at second city is you try things out in front of the audience, like night after night, and you kind of hone them and cut this and add that. Yeah. But the way, but Tina and I did this, we just like wrote it all. I mean, some of it was developed at improv, but we just had our opening night we had no idea how it was going to go. You know, it, all, it went really well. It was really fun. And so then we ended up doing it in New York. And um, anyway, then I, I got to audition again for SNL. And Tina got to be moved up to week, do Weekend Update as well yeah. as be the writer and everything. So, Well, what was your what SNL? I mean, you opened the door. What was your SNL audition? Because oh I, I hear what the rumor is, is that they're not allowed to laugh, which I've heard mixed things. I've heard <laughs> sometimes they laugh and sometimes they do whatever. And you're supposed to pick three different like 
impressions, things, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the kind of guideline, they, I don't know how it is now because this was years ago, but the kind of guideline they gave us is like three characters, three impressions, you know, but I guess if you're really good at impressions, you might do more, yeah. you know, you can, you kind of create your own audition sort of. So yeah, you just come in with your characters and your little bits, and but you walk on, you're, you're auditioning on the stage. Like, I don't think I even realized it in the moment, but you know, you're on the stage where the host comes out to the monologue. Oh, I don't geez. think it even clicked with me till afterwards. It's probably and better then, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you're just kind of warned, like, they might not laugh. I don't really know who, that's just the scuttle, but like, they might not laugh. So don't, you know, but I don't think they're told they can't laugh. I think okay. Be, but, you know, I, I was at the end of the day and there was this guy that I'm, I'm still friends with, actually, who worked in the office and he was standing in the back. He has a really loud laugh. And he was standing there going, like, ah! and I was, thank you, whoever you are. Yeah, you're like, so that, oh. was, that was lucky. But, um, but yeah, I, I didn't get it that year. And then they said, like, okay, maybe next year. You know, because it's always, like, who are they looking for? And yeah, what well, it's, of, it's casting yeah. in general, right? We're filling slots. Yeah. We're filling. I, I had a, an acting teacher once tell me of, like, it doesn't mean you're not a good chair. Like you just have to be the right chair for the kitchen table. They're trying to fill. Like, and I just was like, <laughs> I always think right I'm like, chair. I'm just not the right chair. Okay. Um, but do you remember what your impressions or what your bits were? Of course were? you do. Well, yeah. You, you have well, to, like, right? Like in your brain. The first year, so I did twice. So the first year I did, well, back then Allie McBeal was the yeah. big show. So I did Callista Flockhart. Nice. And then I did two other, I don't remember. I think I did like that news uh, journalist Christian Amanpour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did her like I put her like in a funny setting, so it was like sort yeah. of a gimmick because I don't really do. And then the next year I tried to stack it, and I think I did like I I don't know Sarah Jessica Parker, and I don't know, really. No one that I ended up doing. I feel like with wow. those kind I, of now I feel stupid. I was like, of course you. No, remember. but I feel like I feel like sometimes with those like bit like those pinnacle moments or those like big performance moments, you kind of yeah. black out a little bit. It's interesting too about the laughing because if I'm doing an audition and it's supposed to be comedy, I I should not be paying attention whether they're laughing or not. I should be in this scene and yeah, focused on what's happening. It's hard. And a big thing I, that I teach is that comedy is sincerity. You you have to really yes. believe what's going yeah. on. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm well, trying that's, to that's be comedy. Death yeah, when you try to be funny, right? But it's it's every once in a while I'm like. Oh, they didn't laugh at that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you know, in my mind, you know. It's like a little especially, pain. Especially like if you're in a play or something and you think something's really funny or an improv scene, whatever, and you're like, oh, this is going to get him. And then there's yeah. nothing. You're like, what happened? You know? It and keeps but, you um, humble. <laughs> yeah. And it's tricky too because as an actor and when you're doing sitcom or, or, or you know, any kind of comedy, you, you do want to not go right into the next line. You have to let them laugh and then find that right zone is the way. And- uh, I, I know Jen has this question, but I have to ask. No, ask. When you're doing um, comedy and you start laughing, what is that? Or do do does does the group on on SNL really frown on that? It's like I never broke, or you broke, or what? What is that? What what is the behind the scenes of breaking or not breaking? So I mean, everyone has their own thing about it, but you know. Most people, like, you try not to, of course, before you're ever on the show and ever dream of it, like, you love when people break. Yeah. I mean, I remember, like, um, Chris Farley doing Matt Foley, like, man down by the river, and, like, David Spade and Christina Applegate are sitting, like, yeah. I mean, I just remember that because mm -hmm. it looks so fun, you know, but then when you're on it, you you kind of start to realize, like, well, it's a really cheap gimmick because the audience is going to immediately get on your side. So you can't be laughing through everything you're doing, or you're just not really, like you said, you're not serving the material. But then, of course, there's sometimes, a.k.a. the Debbie Downer at Disney World. I was about to say, I was like, that's a legendary <laughs> yeah, break. That's like the giant break. And we all just started laughing. And um, I don't even really know why I started laughing at the beginning. <laughs> I flubbed a word. I think, like, I wanted it to work so badly because we had done it in dress. Because, you know, at SNL, you're always trying to get, like, a character that works. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, this could be a good one. But I thought that about another thing, like, didn't even get to air you know like so you just never know so this one though I felt really good about them and during dress rehearsal it went really well but like Jimmy and Horatio were laughing a lot and I wasn't laughing and I was thinking like you guys like yeah. <laughs> so for me, you know. but then at air I flubbed a word and then I don't know what it was it might have been like nervous energy but I just started laughing at the flub and then knowing that the camera push in every time like that <laughs> made it even worse and then like if you watch 
my lip starts to tremble. <laughs> like my lip is like involuntarily going. Gah, 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 gah. <laughs> it is such. I'm trying so hard to control my yeah. face, but yeah, it is such a legendary <laughs> like because that's that you were on my generation of SNL, right? So like that, like you talk about Chris Farley and like, and of course I went back and watched like Gilda and yeah. Steve and like oh, all yeah. that kind of stuff. But like growing up, you were the cast that I watched. And so like it, that, that break it, during that sketch, the push in of you being like, I think there was something like my cat has AIDS or something. And oh, like, yeah. you're, just, you're, AIDS, you're yeah. just completely losing it. And it's so tight. It was, it was beautiful. Like if you're gonna, I, I appreciate the fact that you're like, you try not to break because then it becomes like a gimmick. Yeah. But like, what a great way to like, if you're going to do it, you guys did it fantastically. Oh, it's so funny. I'm crying laughing just thinking about it oh, right it's now. So it's good. I'm going to go so home and funny. rewatch it again. It really so is good. because it's, we, we get to participate with you. I, I, you know, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it just is. And the, the Ryan Gosling episode just a little while <laughs> ago, there was a lot of breaking. Oh, yeah, and yeah, it yeah, still yeah. was fun, you know, because it was so funny. Well, and, Kate and McKinnon's we're, like, uh, we're enjoying it uh, with, you know, yeah. I think it's, I think it's okay to, to break. I know it doesn't know. bother me, but. Well, I was going to say, I feel like Lauren Michaels has this like sort of legendary, like, like father figure kind of like reputation sometimes. But I feel like that's not necessarily the case. Cause if you really get into his backstory, like he was this like, you know, cool guy in the sixties and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, but I feel like that's why a lot of times people are like, Oh, you're not supposed to break and you get in trouble is because of his yeah, kind of reputation. Really, I just watched the really Albert don't. Brooks being interviewed by Rob Reiner. Did you watch that documentary or no? No. Oh, oh it's so good. Great. But yeah, they talk, uh, uh, they talk about um, the Albert Brooks show that uh, Lauren Michaels yeah. wanted to do. And he was like, yeah, I don't, want to do that but i want to make like little movies i don't want to be the host every week you should have rotating hosts and stuff so oh. albert brooks i mean whether it's true or not yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a, a possibly a good catalyst to setting the tone as to what it was going to be i've got to see that i'm going to jump ship now on that topic and okay. i want to hear <laughs> what was it like did you get a call from wizards did you, were you aware of the show? Did you watch it? What was your, your first kind of take on becoming future Harper? How did that go? Please tell um, us about that. Well, I'm trying to think back. I think I probably just got the call from my agent and then maybe one of the writers, Pete Varietta, who was also at Second City when I was there. He might've thought of me for this. I don't I'm know, sure. but I imagine it was like some Second City nepotism that might've gotten yeah. me this part. And, um... I wasn't really aware of the show, you know, uh, but um, I was just always looking to do fun things, you know. So when it came up, it, was, it seemed really fun. So, yeah, so I said, sure. I'll well, and what do you remember? Because how many I, I remember you being on for like like maybe a day or two. Right. Yeah, like I you weren't there for the whole week. Right. Day. Yeah. I think it was yeah, just, it was a, just day a day or two. Yeah. But what do you remember um, about like the costume fittings? Because, I mean, you, you we were mentioning earlier, you had that amazing like fishbowl hat. Right. So. All I remember was I had the fishbowl on my head and it was like, it wasn't eat, like you just see things happen on TV and you're like, Oh, it just works. But then yeah. like, think of actually tying a fishbowl to your head. There's going to be some logistical. Mm -hmm. So I remember they really had to, and I had to keep my head pretty still. I remember that. Like I had to walk, like I had a book on my head, you know, cause I had a fishbowl. On my head. Yeah. Um, so it was basically just tied on with a ribbon from what I remember. Um, <laughs> that was, that was my, my biggest, like, costume memory of that but i will say i do get stopped like every once in a while to be like future harper like you know you, you never know what someone's gonna come up to you about and like that's kind of a deep cut like you said deep cut yeah when someone's like future but everyone remembers the fishbowl well because it was <laughs> such like an iconic because i remember i think i had like a little like teaser to the fishbowl because i had a big rubber fish headband or something because yeah. we going over like the the shows has been interesting, like retrospective, because in the first season we were trying to find like Harper's style and clothes and stuff like that. And then second season when you came in, because I think it was, yeah, season two, episode 16, um, we had really leaned into the theme thing. And, and that was that was an aquatic week. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Um, but how did you I mean, I know it's like I know it's a kid show and all that kind of stuff. But how did you approach? Because, I mean, sometimes it's hard to come in like midweek for a day jump into that world and jump back out so how did you approach yeah. that um well it is always I always I'm kind of shy a little bit so like when I know like if you walk into SNL and you know everyone it's like okay yeah. what's up you know but when yeah when you're coming into someone else's set I'm always exactly. like exactly how do you how do you want this done like I don't go into it like 
here's what I think. You're just like, yeah. what's the tone? I don't want to be too big or too small. Like that's why I always like, yeah. that's my dial. That's my act. You were talking about Uda Hagen. My dial is like <laughs> bigger or smaller. Like, that's, my, <laughs> that's my question. Do you want this shout or do you want me to be real? You know, <laughs> that's not a little process happening. Honestly, no. for Disney, that's pretty fair. Cause I mean, I think like, yeah, I mean, SNL even did the whole like Disney school of acting sketch, which is so funny. It's just basically like you just yell and get louder than the yeah. other person. And yeah. it's like, so big and small works great. <laughs> Which is why I fit really well with Disney that my, my dad was always very, you know, gregarious and loud and, and big. So if you wanted to say something, you had to get in there, oh, you know, yeah. at the dinner table, you had to be loud and, and, yeah, and there. Yeah, same with my family. I've never been told to, uh, to make it bigger. I've only, <laughs> only been told to turn it down. Well, did you ever hear, I heard once they, they said, especially with Disney, they said it's better to go too big because they know they can bring you down, but they don't uh, know if they can get you there. Oh, they don't right. know if That's they can get you right. to, push that yeah. far but they know they can bring you down so yeah I, yeah I remember with just Disney and other like kid stuff back in the day that they, they were always saying just go bigger what was your first job as a as an as a, like Ooh. in front not on stage stage but oh, but okay. being filmed what was that I mean it was aside from some commercials in Chicago it was probably SNL wow I'm pretty sure that was the first and that's how I've I've heard maybe it's changed now but I heard like back in the day like, Lauren likes to get people like that, like kind of, yeah. out of just off of out of nowhere, kind of, you know, so out of nowhere, but you had been working and doing well, so course. much right. forever. Well, I mean, it's the overnight. Over like, I think he likes people to come out of like Second City. By the way, I'm speaking for him. I don't really know. But this is just what you hear, like <laughs> Second City or Groundlings back in the day. Now it's a lot of standups. But but he doesn't take a ton of people that have like, a lot of movies under their belt or. That might have changed now, but that's well, what it But I like feel like, that. I mean, we were talking about earlier on, I can't remember if it was on camera, off camera, these conversations all kind of blend <laughs> like they do, but um, about how like as a kid, you're so instinctual and you're so just like, don't second guess things and don't like overthink and you can stay in the moment. And I wonder too, it's like, if you don't, it's not polished because I know improv and, and, and Second City and Groundlings and all that stuff really does polish you and really like gets you really finessed as a comedian. But I think it's a lack of, or I'm pontificating that it's a lack of like inhibition or it's a lack of like being aware of what you look like. And I feel like a lot of times when people start to work more in television and movies, there becomes an awareness of appearance, which can't happen in comedy. I feel like you have to commit and not give a shit what you look yeah. like. Right. Otherwise it's, you know, yeah. it, it kind of screws you. It's, it's so interesting too, but, but um, I, I worked with Jane Curtin and she said in the beginning, oh. she also said that the guys, I hope I'm not talking out of turn, but that they wouldn't come and rehearse, that they were, they would rehearse a lot. The, the, like uh, um, the Gilda and, and, yeah. and they would do it. And then the guys would kind of come in later Whatever that was interesting to me. I was like, "How do you yeah. do that?" I, I know that Dean Martin with my dad wouldn't rehearse either. He would just come in with a cigarette and a you know, well, and I know a drink. Some people and feel like, like, "Where do I, where am I looking at my cards?" Yeah, you know? well, it might be, but some people feel like they want to keep it fresh. Yeah, I know yeah. some people don't like rehearsal for that. And reason. Jane well, said, oh, when yeah. when she sorry when she knew that something was up was when they went to New York to do like a personal appearance thing mm -hmm. and they got mobbed. She she was like I'm terrified now because I didn't realize that it was th this big. Sure. When you were now on the show and going out into the world, what was that like? Because now everybody everybody knows who you are, right? Well, it kind of happens really gradually because you know first year feature player and people have to get used to. Da, da, da. I remember you know I had been on the show like two months and I was in Boston and so I was like Saturday right, Live. I was like what? Like it, it was just starts really gradually. Yeah. But even I don't know like um. I don't really remember that. It's just so gradual. It's not like you're suddenly in the spotlight and, you know, um, it's just people sort of get to know you in their living rooms, you know? Yeah. And so. they feel comfortable with you. I remember when, when we were doing um, Wizards, people were, <clears throat> excuse me, aware of who I was, but I was at a mall and I was on an escalator and I was talking to my kids and then two people in front of me recognized me from my voice. And I was like, oh shit, we're, uh, that's, we're popular because of, that. I was like, that's right. so kind of crazy. Okay. Changing gears, everybody going into okay. another gear. You have a podcast oh, about yeah. the supernatural <laughs> called the woo woo, woo woo, right? woo woo with Rachel Dratch. Yes. And what inspired that? Have you had a supernatural experience? Uh, Jen and I have talked about, we love 
the, you know, Zach Baggins, the, you know, the ghost adventures. Mm -hmm. We love that. And I, listen, I know that I take all of that with a grain of salt. You know, they're like, oh my God, the ghost said, hi, how are you? Hi. You know I mean? Like, it's really weird, but I have had some experiences. Have you, you have had some? You might have to be a guest. Ah. Um, you just signed yourself up, sir. No. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. Um, okay, no, the reason, the, the way this started was, I, yes, I've had a few experiences, but I'm not like a super ghosty yeah. person, which is kind of why I called this woo-woo, because every time one of these stories comes up, I'm like, okay, I don't want to sound all woo-woo, but <laughs> right. blah, blah, blah. I love but, that. Um, but no, over the years, I've just heard some stories from friends, from some actors, but some just you know, regular people um, that have kind of shifted my whole view on all this stuff. And then I think, well, around last year, I was sort of like, this would be a fun topic for a podcast. And so, you know, what if I just tried to pitch this? And so then we got this podcast deal. And so it's not just go. So it's also like anything. It could be, you know, it's like psychic things. It could be manifesting. It could be tarot card, like whatever. Yeah. Anything. So sometimes I have a person on with a really compelling, crazy story. And then other times I'll have like, like Will Ferrell on to talk about like, what does Will Ferrell think of ghosts? Like, so it's sort of all over the map of, you know, an insane ghost story and just like Amy Poehler talking about the Enneagrams, if you know what that is. Oh, so yeah. The personality <laughs> test. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a mishmash of that kind of stuff. Well, what's your, what's your, uh, speaking of mishmash, what's oh. your favorite mash in the paranormal i guess oh, between like oh, ghosts wow. or aliens or oh my gosh well we've had a few really crazy ghost stories that make me like even though i don't like i don't want to be this ghost lady like, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of happening it. i think, I think you kind of like shot yourself few, in the foot <laughs> there's a few stories on there that i'm like there is no way to explain this yeah this can only be explained so um there's that and then also i had a, um i had a psychic tell me i was gonna have a kid when i was uh 43 and i was like Okay, you know, I wasn't believing it. And when when did the how, how old were you at that time? Sitting right over there, I was forty three when she told me, and then I had a kid within, uh, like I had a kid at forty four. Oh, that's wild! So, but, but I mean, like I'm I'm painting this very quickly, but it's yeah. more it's more woo woo than that because whatever. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, he doesn't want you like to talk saying, about like, him. Stop no, talking no, about him, mom. No, I don't mean like that. I just mean like it's it's better when I spin the tail of like, but sure. I just blurted it out. I blurted out the bullet points there. And so <laughs> I have this psychic notes. thing, and I do have a ghost story, that my own ghost story that I tell on the thing. And um, yeah, but I'm kind of just into all the. I'm I'm into being open to it all. Yeah, I think we should be. Why not? Listen, if nothing happens and it just is like the house creaking and I these footsteps that I've heard upstairs or the person I see outside and when I open the door, that person's not there. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. If it, w whatever. I, I think keeping an open mind is a good idea. Well, it's a mystical, magical and, world. And Come I also, on. I think that there's different different um, levels of being in tune with the other side, as it were. You know, there's certain yeah. people that that... Like I went to a psychic one time and he's like, oh, your grandmother's here. And I, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, and, and she said, hmm. she, he, <clears throat> he said, she's saying, thank you for the brooch with the pearls. Now I was a little kid and I got these two pearls and I made earrings for my grandmother. She never had pierced ears. And she, she took the earrings and made a brooch out of it. So, I mean, how the fuck is he supposed to know that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, that's that's a good one. Because I, I've heard, a, like, the medium thing is the thing I'm the most skeptical of. And you hear a lot of things like, I'm seeing flowers. Like, everything, they just say really generic things. Yeah. Right. But that one is really, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, it was intense. And here's the other thing. Whether he was telling the truth or he somehow found that out or whatever, it still made me feel good and it made yeah. me connected to my, my grandmother, yeah. you know? So that, that was nice. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I, I think so too. Like it, it's, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like the medium thing. I feel, I, I went to one after like the Hollywood forever cemetery. My friend and I were like, well, we just saw a movie in the cemetery. Let's go get whatever. So we walked down to a sidekick and she just was trying to sell me some like crystal class or something. I was like, this is bullshit. But like, but again, there's like good and bad of any kind of profession. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know what? I heard someone recently say, um, and it's like my dream to have a Victorian house with a ghost in it, a nice one. <laughs> but um, but they were saying they were like, why are the ghosts only from like the Victorian era and back? And like, also what is in that? America, there's there, there's not a yeah, lot of um, ghosts in although, different places. Although like because my wife is German and we spend a lot of time in Berlin, 
I mean, yeah, there is ghosts, but we don't, we don't, I'm not there is ghosts, but there <laughs> are those stories, but there's not like a German ghost show that I'm aware yeah, of yeah. where they're like. Because Zach Baggins has covered the whole medium. <laughs> You have to see the show, by the way. We okay, I third see. wheel it. You have to see it. It's Ghost Adventures. I third wheel okay. it with Yulia and uh, David's wife and David. And um, I'll, they'll we'll have dinner and we'll watch the show. And it's this man who like is still in his like emo phase, and he uh, takes himself very seriously. He talks a certain way. So uh, <laughs> someone will say, "So I went down the street and I saw this ghost," and he goes, <sighs> "So what you're saying is you went down the street." And then you saw a ghost. It's so ridiculous. It's really fun. It's him being silly and also all these like, you know, and they have all the machines and the, you know, the, oh, the, the yeah, puck yeah, yeah. where they can talk yeah. through but it. The and stick all figures that. are my favorite. They have this one machine. I have to tell you. Where it can pick up like a figure, like a ghost figure. But it'll and it, be like, it looks like, but it shows them in stick figures. So it connects like a square head and like this. And so they'll just be like this on, and they're like, there's a ghost on you. There's a ghost on you right now. And it's just these like fucking stick figures. <laughs> it's my absolute favorite. It's so good. Oh my gosh. But I, I mean, watch this. Yeah, you have to. You have to watch it and let me know what you think. Um, but and ba it, back one second yeah, to, yeah. to you being a mom right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank and you. It, the, the interesting thing, too, is a psychic telling you something and then something happened. Yeah. Was it, w w was it put in the ether? Was it manifested a little bit by that seed be planted? Um, or you know what I mean? Is yeah. the, was no, there I anything? see what you mean, but... The the way I mean I just saw it as like pure psychic magic the way because yeah. I wasn't like look I wasn't like trying to make it all this like it was just the way it all happened it kind of made me a believer. So have you figured out know. how it happened now? Or? <laughs> Are you asking if she figured out the birds and the bees? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, that's so wonderful. I, I, I'm a dad. I have two daughters, and you know it's a lot. It's a lot of work, but it's also a wonderful thing when they look at you and say, thank you, mom, or oh, I love yeah. you. You know, it makes yeah, it all yeah, yeah. worth it. No, he's, you know? he's super fun. Yeah. Well, in 2012, <laughs> you, you, wrote, <laughs> you look over. No, he's right there. I don't know if he's listening to me. But um, in 2012, you wrote a book about, I mean, you're right? like a, a girl walks into a bar about this experience. Yeah. What was something that you wanted people to take away from that? What's the name of the book? Again? Oh, girl walks into, girl a bar. walks into a bar. So, so the, the book happened because, so after I was done SNL, like, you know, you imagine like SNL and then my, three picture movie deal and it didn't really like things really slowed down after I, I thought the same thing after Wizards I was <laughs> yeah. like I'm gonna go do ABC Family then ABC right, and then right. movies and again yeah. humbling yes exactly so then I started um just writing these little like stories you know the moth or, like I don't know if you know the moth. yeah it's like a storytelling so I started writing little stories like that like like you know real things that would happen to me I'd try to write an essay about it kind of yeah. anyway I had this kind of stack of stories and um but I didn't really know what happened. Like, where does this all go as a book? And then, then a year later is when I got pregnant. And then I was like, oh, the, now there's a plot twist here. So yeah. the first half of the book, like, I didn't know that the second half <laughs> was going to happen, really, is how it worked out. But, um, yeah, it's about having a surprise kid and all that all that comes with that. And, um, yeah, and also some comedy stuff, too, and bad dates and. Yeah. Weird shit like that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it was helpful because I feel like that that's something that isn't talked about a lot. And I hate, I hate the name. I think they changed it, but they used to call it like geriatric pregnancies, which is just oh, yeah. oh awful. Gosh. Like, come on. <laughs> Advanced uh, maternal age. Yeah. But even that's fucking terrible. Right. Like we need to come up with a better term. But, yeah. but I imagine like that was really helpful for a lot of people to be able to relate to that. Because like I said, it's kind of something where, you know, I mean, hell, my mom is in like bumfuck Texas right now. And um, she can't even find a gynecologist to like make sure that like she's taken care of in her 60s because he's like, well, if you're not having babies, you're fine, whatever. Like, oh, wow, so I think yeah. a lot of times like it, it gets sort of like not the attention it deserves. You know what I mean? Of of so yeah, I, I mean, love that so, you were able to speak to that experience for people. Well, also when I wrote it, like I mean, he was actually still a baby when I wrote it, so I didn't yeah. really go on. Maybe the next book is about like. <laughs> you know, yeah. know like keeping up with your whatever but um <laughs> but no uh wait what was I gonna say um oh people that come up to me about the book it's largely about you know for me what the book was I was like you think you know how your story is gonna go yeah and you think like well this is how it is and then like I don't know people seem to respond to like the kind of magical twist that happens yeah so I think I don't know a lot of ladies seem to like it 
Well, and don't you think like, <laughs> I, I feel like, cause I had a similar experience in my life where if you had told me 10 years ago, I'd be where I am now, I'd be like, you're full of shit. But, um, but I think to kind of tying it all together. I don't know if you know this, but Jen is a nurse in an I ER. Did. She yes. She wipes people's butts and saves people's lives. Talk about keeping you humble. I mean, she loves <laughs> to say that. That's why I said that. But it's such a wonderful, I'm so proud of her that Thank she's you, doing David. that. I, I'm sorry, I interrupted no, you. But. No, no, no. no it's, but I was wondering, you're still, you're still a nurse now. Like you're Yeah, a I just worked, oh, wow. I just worked oh, two gosh. shifts. Yeah, I just, uh, yesterday, this, this poor man, he, he, I mean, he, he was older. He has dementia. He like fell down. Cause I mean that we get a lot of little old people. That was my yeah. theme yesterday. There's a theme to every shift. Yesterday was old people that f- fell down. She oh works in the hospital that I was born at. Isn't, Isn't that, that crazy? such a weird, like small world, but this yeah. poor man, I, he was kind of being a dick to, I was training a newer nurse and he was being a dick to um, her. Cause I mean, I, if I didn't know what was going on and I, you know, I, I'd be probably not the friendliest person either, but <laughs> I was going to start an IV and I was trying to like, I was like ready to go toe to toe with him. Cause I really get like protective of like the newer, younger nurses. Cause it's hard and it's really scary and it's a huge learning curve. And, um, and he just all of a sudden randomly was like, do you ride motorcycles? And I was like, yeah, I do. So we start commiserating about motorcycles, but then he starts hallucinating oh God. about this. Like, cause like he starts hallucinating about this like car accident that he got to. So I'm trying to start this IV and he's like, no, the kids look out for the children. Oh. And like, it's just, so it's one of those things where it's like you have to like talking about finding and and I and I see some like horribly sad things but to just keep yourself sane you have to find comedy in just the Mm. ridiculousness of life and what happens to people and things like that because like I said just like floating out of your body trying to start an IV on this man who's like trying to avoid hitting children with a motorcycle like it's wild it's just wild it's a special thing to to become a nurse and to help people and to work that. with them. Yeah. It's amazing. But I, but my, my point with all that is the fact that I think it's those, I, I think a lot of us have this idea of the trajectory of what life is going to be like. And then when it, it kind of flips it on its head, I think it allows us to be not only more well-rounded, have better perspective, but also to be open to more things, whether it's psychics and ghosts or, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. it's like Newton's third law, right? I'm kind of going on a tangent, but Did, like energy is neither created or destroyed. It's led me into a so. question I want to ask Rachel. Did you ever have a backup plan? Your dad oh, that's a great question. performed and did stuff and then became a, a doctor or ra- radiologist. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Did you have a in your mind a because I, I always wanted to I painted houses and I was gonna do like construction and then I kept working as an actor so I was happy I didn't have to do that. Did yeah. you have a backup plan? Well, yeah, I mean my backup plan was like to be the therapist to go to yeah. oh, right, right, right. for psychology. Sorry. No, that's okay, but um, but that was my you know I I think I would have been happy doing that and it wouldn't have felt like. Oh, I'm doing this, but I don't know. Maybe every time I saw a movie, I'd be like, oh, what if, you know, what if, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I just put it together too, that future Harper was writing mm-hmm. books about the Russos, right? Yeah. Yes. That, yeah, that, that was I, interesting. Yeah. And wh- where did you come up with girl walks into a bar? What was, what was that? Is, the, is it, the is title it you like, mean, or the, it's because I met um, Eli's dad at, at a bar around the corner from my house. Ah, well, there you yeah, go. Yeah. So, and and of course the old comedy thing, go walks in and about. It was the combo yeah. of the comedy of the yeah. Mel, so it, fits, it fits well. Mel told a, a joke one time. He says two Jews walk into a bar, they buy it. And that's the whole joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I like yeah. that one. What do you, uh, speaking of, yeah, I mean, I know we've been speaking of comedy the whole damn time, but <laughs> what do you find like the hardest format? Do you find it stand up? Do you find it writing? Do you find it sketch? Well, I've improv? never done stand up. I would never be, I so far have not been, I don't want to say never, but I've never been bold enough or had the desire to it. So to me, that yeah. seems the hardest to just yeah. get there telling jokes. But um, I don't know. I, you know, I, you were talking about drama earlier. Like I would find that the hardest. Like whenever mm. I see a script, it's like, she breaks down over the loss. I'd just be like, eh, I'm not the best person for this job. Like, I, like, like that's what I, but if it's comedy, it's like whether it's stage or movie or TV, I feel pretty com- comfortable in that. I guess out of the three, probably movies are the hardest because you don't really you have no gauge. And like, that's the most yeah. like big or small. Like, what do you like? What yeah, do you, everybody yeah. has to be quiet too on the set. You yeah. know, no one's allowed to laugh. Yeah. So like yeah. where, where, you know, am right. I being funny or am I, am I out of my mind? Right. You well, know? And I've, and, I've sort of learned over the years, like to have the internal thing of like, yeah, this is funny or not, but it's yeah. the most sort of 
guesswork. That's it. Yeah, and the stand up is really hard. A lot of people want me to do stand up. I did. I took a course. Oh yeah. Um, with a friend of mine, Jody, and, and she was so talented, and she helped me find the truth and the material. And I did it, and it wasn't fun because I was shitting in my pants. Yes. I was like, it's terrifying. Oh, am I gonna? Ah, ah. I was so scared to go up there, and it wasn't enjoyable. I didn't have a yeah. good time. You know, there's so kind of something a little bit like. The stand-ups that I've come across, there's something a little bit like, I don't know if like flogging or masochistic is like the best way to put it. Like there's something about stepping into that, which I mean, I, I came from theater and like live performance. So I, I know the high of not sure if it's going to work and just stepping out into the deep end and seeing like that high is so beautiful, which you lose in movies because it's all disjointed. But I think it's even like more so like masochistic as a stand-up because you don't have a script. You don't have a well, narrative. You don't have, I mean, you do kind of have a script. Yeah, but, and, and it, but it's you. But it's you. It's right, not you right. doing a character. It's you. Sometimes it's you, know? you doing a character. I mean, if you look at, oh, uh, yeah. you know, some stand-ups, yeah, like, that was their whole true. spiel. But yeah, um, but yeah I, I'm, I'm with you there. It scares the shit out of me, but I'm fascinated by it. Oh, my God. Do you have any questions for us? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> oh, no, She's I like, did. She's like, no, actually. actually. Wait, I wanted, you to know how you, I wanted to know how you jumped from acting to wanting to be a nurse. Yeah. But you so probably I, said that on here, but I, but I was wondering. No, I mean, I, I appreciate the curiosity. I, um, I'll give you the spark notes as well. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, um, I was diagnosed. So the show wizards ended when I was 18, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was 20 and it took me like four years going to hospitals and not really being sure what was going on. So it was a really long, like chronic condition journey, if you will, because I was older and everybody always thinks of type one as like you get that when you're a kid. So you have to have type two. And so it just took a really long time to sort of get the right doctors and the right treatment and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I had wrapped up, um, I was coming to the end of needing to transfer for my psychology degree. And I thought, well, what's something where I can continue to act? Cause I still have that passion. I still have it to this day. And, but also understand my body better and be able to give back to people who are in that not knowing period because since I was in the not knowing for four years, like I understood really well how hard that is, is not knowing what's going on with your body. So I wanted to be able to be like, look, I've been there. You will figure it out. You will have a plan. Um, and yeah, so I, I completely started over and, and just kind of chucked those years of prepping for my psychology degree and went to nursing school and wow. somehow had the weird woo woo um, fortune <laughs> of um, graduated December, 2019 and started in the ER March, 2020. So which is impeccable timing. I mean, oh I'm a big believer. Things are met, like things happen the way they're supposed to. So, and that timing is just, cause I had to, I, I look back at it and I was like, I had to get into nursing school at exactly that moment. I had to graduate at exactly that moment. If I was one month here or there, it wouldn't have happened that way. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer. I was where I was supposed to be. Well, so. We're all proud of you and we all thank Don't you. Don't turn it back around to me. That makes me so no. uncomfortable. What do you mean? Wait, do, people, do people recognize you and you're putting an IV in and be like, wait, mm -hmm. this is, oh really? That was Yeah. Oh, but there was one time where. I don't mean to talk out of turn if I am, but there was somebody who was like tripping on acid or they were doing like, you know, they, they were, they were overdosed on hallucinogens and they came in and they were like, are you Harper from wizards or this? And what did you say to her? Did you say, I, I, no, I pick but my moments. I pick my moments. It, it's a gift of if some, cause people, I see people on their worst days. Right. So I see people when they're not having a good day, they would just right. waited for eight hours or like right. they're not feeling great. So it's a nice gift of being able to like make somebody's day when it's started off pretty shitty. Um, but yeah, sometimes like when they're tripping on like acid or like high as a kite or on, on like edibles or something, I'll just kind of lean That's into so like, funny. what a weird trip I had. I thought I saw the fruit girl from the wizard show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I just kind of, I pick my battles on like which one it, it works on. But so um, cool. listen, if you were serious about me being or yes. us being on the woo, -woo yes. we would love to do that. Yeah, I would love and it. You asked me if I had any paranormal stories. I do. So, Ooh, okay. but, well, so yeah. Should we oh, hold it for the woo, -woo. No, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it for the woo, -woo. Oh, hold it for, okay. yeah, awesome. Wow, well, right. are there any episodes of it that you're excited to kind of tease and talk about that are coming up? Oh my gosh. Well, oh, I have to make sure this actually happens, but yeah, we're into, there's two that are coming up. One we did. It's the actor, Frank Whaley. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a movie with he him. He yeah. has the most incredible ghost story oh, I've ever wait. heard. And that I one's coming wait. out soon. And swimming then, with sharks. Yes. Frank swimming with yes. Oh my God. It's and so then, good. And then, um, 
And then we're interviewing, I mean, I have to make sure this happens because next week, but we're interviewing Gloria Steinem. Wow. What? I know. And the way this came about is she once did the monologues for Upright Citizens Brigade, the improv yeah. show. Mm-hmm. And she told, you know, those are true stories about yourself. She told a story and I, I don't quite remember, but I remember it was something about like a message from beyond that she had like some deal with her partners. I, I, I don't yeah. know the story, but I just remember thinking like, that's the crazy story. So then like all these years later, I contacted her. I mean, I don't know her. And she said she would do it. So Hell I'm, yes. I mean, I'm nervous because I'm no NPR interview. I'm not prepped like you. So I am going to have to be like, I don't want to be like, in 1968, you led the women's <laughs> you know, that's, like, that's not my brand. So I got to figure out like, how do I honor Gloria Steinem yeah. and talk about her woo-woo story? So I'm very excited about that. Oh, no, that'll be, be so good. When does it come? When does it drop? When do you I'm drop? I'm not sure when that one drops, but... but- um, is because, there a specific day? Oh yeah, Wednesdays. The, Everything drops on Wednesday. The new one got comes it. on Wednesday. So okay. um, I'm not sure when these two are coming out, but uh, in the next coming week. Well, everybody, week. everybody, go and check out. Yes. The the woo woo. And we loved you being here. It was so nice Thank to see you. you. Thank you for sharing your time. I barely and... talked about I barely talked about Wizards of Waverly Place. Well, I mean, you were there for a day, <laughs> okay, honestly. Okay. So I mean it's I'm not I'm not gonna be like, <laughs> hey, you're, you're the, the fishbowl. Fish and you better coming up we're, and being nice to me. Yeah. But we're also, also <laughs> we're also talking about magical people and magical things, yeah. and you're very okay, magical good. and woo. you know, I mean okay. woo. Woo. <laughs> It all goes back to the magic. Okay. But we love you so much. And I'm still, I'm I'm still all these years later, such a big fan. So I'm, 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 for for what, however many years it's been, I'm still geeking out on you. So thank you so much for your time. And I just, I just think you're the coolest. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I wanted to say everybody like, and subscribe. (laughs) Check out woo woo. All right. We'll, we'll see you soon. All right.